Hey, I'm Charlotte Tahira. Hey, I'm Christina. Hey, I'm Maya. And I'm here with the British Blacklist and DDA. If you could describe the film in three words, what would it be and why? Oh, that's tough. It's an artwork. It's it makes you feel unsafe and it is strangely beautiful at the same time. And what kind of techniques do you use personally to shut down after you were filming? Because obviously your character is a very intense one, not a very nice one as well. Yeah, I don't know, is there any technique? I had, for the first time of my life, some panic attacks, uh, maybe two months after the shooting it started. I'm, I'm fine now, but I had the feeling, okay, maybe this is a side effect of corona or something. But then I, I, I felt there's a, something in my subconscious. There's the responsibility towards the victims, the historical context, the method. We shot uh, with 10 cameras, sometimes simultaneously. Uh, and this cocktail was really intense. Do you portray that feeling, knowing that there were so many mothers who couldn't protect their families in that situation? Oh, I don't know anything about her feelings, really. I did, really didn't care about her feelings. I try to kind of show the actions that she's constantly performing in a way in order not to think about anything at any time because if she would stop, she would start to think about what she's actually doing and that would destroy her little, how do you say, idyllic... Her bubble. Her bubble. Yeah. Being a new mum, it's obviously her first child. The amount of emotion, postpartum, everything that comes with that. What, what advice would you give to a mother who is going through that, but then at, simultaneously going through a really traumatic life um, experience? Because obviously, just motherhood alone is a lot to handle, and the way you portrayed it was was so effective. I think we wanted, I think we were, like, from Megan's novel as well, and, and, and we, we wanted to sort of talk about that, the inability to sort of, like, take on the whole world. What do you believe the end we start from communicates about the process of coping with grief? Such a good question. I think that there are, you know, the characters in this film, various characters, you know, sort of experience grief in really different ways. It's sort of, so there's... I mean, it's, it's so complex, it's so personal, how we all kind of, um, everybody's own experiences with grief. is so, so I hope that we've done some justice to sort of saying that, you know, it's, it's different and it's painful and sharp and difficult in so many different ways. Uh, and then, of course, it's casting someone as brilliant as Emma Stone. Emma Stone. Who, how was she on set and following your direction? Well, she, she's just, you know, she created this character herself, basically, because... You know, apart from what's on, on the page, it's difficult to materialize it. And I think she did a great job. That whole time when he's explaining the story of her being found and, you know, then you see a brain getting taken over it. <laughs> it's kind of, you don't get to see that too often, so I, I kind of enjoyed that. If you could swap your brain for 24 hours <laughs> with anything or any person, who would it be and why? I would like it to be my dog. Okay. Yes, I want to know what they're what it's thinking. <laughs> if it likes you or not. Yeah, that too. Colors from um, sort of the body, from blood and medical equipment and and skin and flesh tones, and try to make a palette that felt anatomical and and relevant to Bella's um, beginning, I suppose, a, a medical past. Color. So it's a good color. You know, it's a good, it's a kind of a good way to drop into a lot of a colourful world. Were there any challenges when approaching it, especially because there were so many gory scenes? The whole thing was a challenge, you know, like, we're set in a period world, but then there's, like, this really unique twist to it. We've never seen the characters before. Yes. We've got this girl in Bella that doesn't look like anyone else. Like, the biggest challenge was, what are they and what do they look like? You know, you can't even reference something else because it's all completely new, right? So... Well, what the hell's going on? The soundtrack was mental. So you kind of go, okay, I know it's this kind of film, man. Look, man, we're on the red carpet, baby. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. <laughs> How does it feel now you're on your closing night? We've had such a fun time, and it's been so nice. We've just spent the last 12 days introducing films to audiences. The team I know chased it down as soon as they saw it. They wanted it for closing, so I guess we're about to find out. Is there a particular scene in this whole movie that you want the audience to see that you're very excited about? 
the ride out scenes, man. That's like, yeah. it was so fun shooting them. It was real, like everything about the kitchen was real people. It, it didn't feel like actors, like everyone was just real people and we all believed in the, in the story. Roller disco, just because of how it was on set, it was literally like having a party on set. It was amazing. No, did you just find the natural flow and it was really organic between you two? I sort of got the natural flow. Like, yeah. You were just we kind of get a vibe from each other just from how he's acting on set. Because I don't even think he was acting, I just think he was just method acting it. To be a part of the world now, it's just phenomenal. And to see myself on screen is it's literally unreal. That this character was amazing to play because he serves the story and becomes he's like a in essence, he's like a, I don't know if you can use the word microcosm for one character, but he's, in essence, he's like a microcosm, a representation yeah. of the resistance. It's brilliant. I watched the film for the first time yesterday and I was gobsmacked. And I can't wait to watch it again now.